Hello, good afternoon. This is Jason Neosatis on Global Peace Radio. I have the great pleasure this afternoon of interviewing Gerald Salenti, one of my favorite, well, my favorite warrior for truth. I wouldn't say one of my favorite warriors. He is a favorite warrior of mine for truth. Um, it's from www.trendsresearch.com in New York. Uh, hello, Gerald. Hello there, Jason. Thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. It's, it's great to have you on, Gerald. I, I'll just say something, if you don't mind, is that I, I really feel that, you know, Gerald is, is, is really dedicated to helping people sort of awaken from the anesthetizing effects of our brutal system, you know, both which spiritually and, and, and physically choke people off. It's, and I believe you're the smelling salts uh, for humanity in a big way, Gerald, yeah? <laughs> 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 I really mean that, honestly. It's, it's great. I, I, it's great that, that you're so bold and you can you can speak to people. Thanks for the uh, Trends Journal. Uh, Gerald, Gerald also does the Trends Journal, which is um, Trends Journal uh, Research Institute. That's www.trendsresearch.com, which is the most amazing uh, uh, journal. Gerald, I've really enjoyed reading it. Thank you for that. And, and but like I said, particularly the first page where you you give an overview of, of, of the anesthetizing system that we're living in. You said, you know, why is that that people should know better? You know, what makes them suspend their good judgment and surrender power to strangers whose beliefs uh, and above all deeds and actions run contrary to what they feel in their hearts, you know, Gerald? Yeah, I don't know why they do it. You know, we have the presidential reality show going on over here now in the States. And they just had the Republican convention, and last night the Democratic convention began. And to listen to these people babble on, these arrogant, in their arrogant know-it-all voices, and it, it, reading from teleprompters, totally scripted, everything to the, to the pause and the stuttering, and people buy into it. It's such a cheap show, mm -hmm. and, and they keep doing it. It's terrible, Gerald. And I, I was thinking of you when I was watching it the other night, in fact, after what you said in the, on the front page of the journal, I was thinking, well, why? Like you said, why is it? And then it came into my mind, well, it's, it's, it, I think it's basically fear, Gerald. Fear, fear is so paralytic to consciousness and, and, and it sort of chokes people's perception off, doesn't it? I think people are so frightened because um, they know these people will, will, will whack their heads off, don't you think? Somehow it's like that fear inside people. Yeah, I guess it's fear, but, you know, even when there's no fear, they still believe them. <clears throat> and they'll argue that their freak is better than your freak. And they'll, not only will they argue, they'll fight and die for them. Again, you know, these are, I'm talking about adults. You know, for children, you could excuse the behavior at some point. But, you know, the, these are adults that listen to these two-bit lines that they throw out. I watched... Last night, you know, I'm a political atheist. I don't believe in this fairy tale of, <laughs> of, of political uh, parties. You know, anybody's entitled to believe in their political gods, but, you know, I, I just don't do that. And I, I have a background, by the way. I began my career at a graduate school running political campaigns in Westchester County, which is <clears throat> the richest county in the United States. And then I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate, and I designed and taught American politics and campaign technology <clears throat> at St. John's University in New York. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, you know, I have firsthand knowledge of what this stuff looks like. And my job in the Senate was the worst job I ever had because all day long you would watch grown men grovel to suck their way up to the top. So when I watch these politicians and, and give their talks, it has nothing to do with me liking any of them one more than the other. I despise both. So having said that, last night I watched Michelle Obama's speech. It was Dara's day at Disneyland. <laughs> it, was, it was just totally, it was, it was loathsome, <laughs> the pandering. And, and here's what you learn. You learn from watching Romney's speech and her speech. The Romney family and, their, and the Obama family, these are special families, rich or poor. They, they are so far above any of us. They are so more gifted than any of us. Their parents and their, and their siblings are so far superior than any of us. We are fortunate and we should be thankful for them just allowing us to breathe the air around us <laughs> and to give us, a, give us the freedom to tie our shoes and put our clothes on. Fantastic. That's how much better they are than we are. 
<laughs> oh, Gerald, I love the way you put it. It's so you put it so succinctly. It's just beautifully put. You're a poet. I'm not joking. It, I, I absolutely agree with you, Gerald. Obviously, it's just these these people have broken people's spirits, like a horse. Like a horse has its spirit broken, I believe. You know, and and it's that we're the followers. You're the leaders, and and it's almost like like you said, they're like gods. And I do truly, Gerald, believe that they are. It's like people are waving their flags. Help us. We're helpless. Save us. You're our messiahs. We can't, we can't function without you. This is what they're saying, really, like Oliver Twist. And I do truly believe people. It's like almost a psychic, uh, uh, it's like a, a sort of possession, a spirit possession almost, Gerald, you know. And government's a sickness. My great mentor years ago said that. He said, anyone who wants to govern someone else is sick. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're, they're psychopaths and sociopaths. And they call themselves, you know, public servants and lawmakers. Yeah, just what I need, somebody to make laws for me. Some jerk to come around and say, here, this is the law that you should follow because I'm a lawmaker, but the law is only for you. And you want to see laws that are only for you. You know, Desmond Tutu just came out a couple of days ago and showed the difference between how how the, um, the Hague really pulls apart these, these, these African leaders and Asian leaders and, and, and people from smaller countries when they commit crimes. But they give people like George Bush and Blair and the rest of them a free ride for committing their war crimes. What bigger war crime has been committed in, you know, probably since the Vietnam War, that was a beautiful war crime, than the Iraq War and the Afghan War? But you don't see anybody being brought up on charges. You didn't see any charges from all the financial thievery that's been going on in the United States from uh, the, the economic meltdown, the banks, Citigroup, the Morgan, uh, Morgan Stanley, the, uh, the J.P. Morgan Chase, the uh, Goldman Sachs gang, the Merrill Lynch mob. Not one of them does any time, gets called up on any charges. The MF Global scandal, which I got brought down on, nobody get, does any time. So, yes, the people are disgusting. They should be ashamed of themselves, like little children at a high school pep rally, cheering on the class president. And that's all these guys are. These people are the same people you hated in high school and college that wanted to be class president and head of the student council. The brown noses, the suck ups, the glad handers, the overly ambitious and the insincere. And the little kitties in the peanut gallery, you know why they're doing it? I'll tell you why they're doing it. Because they're all getting something from it. They're all sucking off the public tit. And they're all pulling money out of our pockets. That's why they're there waving the flags. It doesn't have anything to do with fear. It has to do with what can it get me? These are low-life little weenies. <laughs> That's who they are. That's why they're doing it. <laughs> bravo, 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 uh, Gerald Salente. Fantastic. And I like what you said about Tutu. Great guy, Tutu. I was shot in Cape Town in the 80s for, for, for opening my mouth there. Um, you know, and what you just said about about uh, with the France and the France and the, you know the chemicals and, and all this and the nuclear uh, the, what what they've been doing out there the bombing the living daylights from no one gets prosecuted with the financial and the war mongering. Uh, what makes me laugh is, is 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 France now is saying if they use chemicals, of course they use in France again now like they did with Libya as the as the arrowhead, you know, so the U.S. don't get blamed. So France says you use chemicals, we'll get you. By the way, France been using chemicals in Libya, depleted uranium, uh, four and a half billion years, people can't have babies, cancers, and in Iraq, wiped out, it's genocide. But all this, Gerald, I believe it's like a forced awakening. Like you said, the people sucking on the tit, the people are asleep. I feel that, ironically, this whole debacle, if you like, is that the right? It's like a forced awakening for the population. Don't you feel that? They're being forced to awaken now? With no, you know, I wish I could say that. Right? And, and it, it, some of the population, the people that have been awake are awake. A lot of new people are, are awakening, yes. But it's going to take the individual to change. Mm. The human spirit has to change. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, matter of fact, one of the trends that we're going to be forecasting for 2013 is the new, new age. Wonderful. And when people realize that it's when they find their greatness within them, we each have this, this, this special gift 
that no one else has, when they bring that to light, then we will move into a higher consciousness. But we're going to, I, I saw this wonderful uh, little movie they had, a, a documentary, not a little one, it was actually, it was wonderful, I Am an Elephant, and about how they're, how they're mistreating the elephants in Thailand. And this young girl who, who spearheaded this thing, 14 years old, I'm listening to her talk, I'm thinking when I was 14, you know, I was, I was uh, reading comic books, you know, and this bright little girl uh, talking uh, so intelligently. And at the end, she said, she was talking about this woman, Lek, in, in Thailand that has this um, uh, reserve for the animals, that the, the elephants that are so abused, they can't, they're no longer functional. So she takes them in to save them and give them the rest of their good life in, in dignity. And she said, if Lek could do it, if one person could do it, think of what a herd can do. Mm. And that's what people have to awaken to. Mm. You know, here's my saying. If Clinton can, if Bush can, if Obama can, you can, <laughs> and I can. <laughs> Unless, of course, you think that their mother's better than yours. Because that's what they tell you when you listen to the presidential reality show. Your mother's worth nothing. You're lucky to even be here. Their mother's better than yours. Mm -hmm. Their father, your father couldn't shine his shoes. Mm, fantastic, Gerald. I, I love it. It's, it's absolutely true. And, you know, I'm so glad that you're out there talking. I, I talk the same language as you. It, you, people got to say it as it is, and these people think they're better than us. It's ridiculous, and everyone has believed it. And I liked what you said about the elephant, because I looked at that video you did this morning, and we watched it three times, me and my partner. We loved the bit about the, when the guy fell over, the, the, the Spanish guy. It was comical. And the elephant chain is a good analogy. You know, they tie elephants up. They put them on a chain. The elephant tugs and tugs and tugs for, for ages, and then eventually they let the chain off, and the elephant doesn't tug anymore. Just like human beings now, and I, I, I'm really glad to hear you talking, Jill, because I know you were you were in the uh, the development movement years ago. You know when it started, you, uh, I've heard you talking about that, and I'm glad to hear you talking now because I, I talk about that in my book about the when until individuals change, it's like a big orchestra, until they retune and and and. and get that thing back that we've lost. It's like we've been dislocated. It's like a dislocation from the self, a dismembering from, from the self. And that is what the real religions were talking about, Gerald, if you look back at them. It's a religament in back to what we've lost. And like you said, you know, if you could elaborate on that a bit, I'd appreciate it. Until people find that back in themselves, like you've said in the, on the front page of the Trends Journal, I, I advise everybody to get it. Um, it will never change unless the individual changes, will it? No, well, you, know, you, you said something before. They said they break your spirit. Yeah. And, and the analogy you used with the elephant and how they break elephant's spirits and all animals' spirits. Yeah. And they break your spirit the same way. They just do it with different methods. And, and what is it? I'll tell you my, how I just feel about life. And I don't tell anybody what to believe. And, yeah. or my, you know, my motto, think for yourself. And, and about people reaching their level of, of courage and dignity and respect and integrity yep. and passion. You know, I, I'm, I was married for many years, and I'm divorced a long time. And um, yeah, I don't have any children, and everybody I love is dead. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I see, you know, there's the end, you know. And so for me, again, only speaking for myself, you know, we, we hear a lot of stuff. I, I listen again to these 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 camp, these. Uh, the presidential reality show and the conventions. I'm sick and tired of these people telling me about their God, you know, mm. and how they love God and they love family. And they're, again, you know, I don't want to hear their crap anymore. Yeah, no, me. So the way I look at heaven and hell, and, and not even heaven, just mm. hell, it, to me, hell is taking that last breath and knowing that you lied to yourself and you weren't the person who you said you were. Yeah. And so that's all it comes down to for me. Yep. When I check out, I want to check out with a clear conscience. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I, I, again, that's, that's the way I see it. So if people might consider doing that and think of that thought, mm -hmm. when I leave this earth, will I have lived up to who I am and said I should be and what I was? And I think if you, if you think about that on a daily basis you'll start living more by the golden rule. 
and and doing unto others as you they would you would have them do unto you and also to start doing the things that if you believe in any kind of spirituality you know are you doing what you can do to help those that can't help themselves mm -hmm. are you being a global citizen in the sense of are you respecting the earth you know people argue about the environment you know there aren't enough studies to prove that if you dump trillions of tons of pollutants into the water, air, and food, it's going to kill you. You know, you don't, we don't need any studies. Let's just use some common sense here. Bravo, Gerald. You're, you're absolutely right, obviously. And it's like, you know, people have become, I think what's happened is people have been so dislocated. I keep coming back for that, to that word, I know, and it's like an amnesia. And it's the anesthetizing effect of the, of the, of the system we live in. And I know I'm, I'm like, a bit like you, in a way, I, I don't forgive them completely. It's like, look, wake up, and I think they're being shaken now to the core. When will they wake up? When they're queuing in, in, in a, line, a queue for bread, like, a, like, like, like in Greece? And, and I, I, I like the dog analogy. I had a dog, Gerald, before, and I, the dog wanted to be free, obviously, but she wanted to stay with us. And I said the other day, is if, if, you open, uh, if we open the door to a dog and say, go on, then you're free, the dog will look at freedom, look at you, and think, well, I'm getting a few morsels of food here. I think people have been so disempowered, Gerald, that they, they don't believe they can be free. They don't believe that they can fend for themselves. And that brings me on to food. I've heard you talk about food, the biggest dependency of all. If people can't feed themselves, they're paralyzed. And it's the biggest thing of all, the biggest uh, uh, chain, isn't it, around people's necks? Yeah, well, yeah, you, you're, you're right. People don't believe they can be free. I, I, that's, that's really, really well put. They're dependent on everything, and your food, you bring it back to that. Uh, you know, when I first began to forecast trends, I, I really started to learn in the late 70s. And it, it was a real shock to me. I was a very different guy. And I started waking up and for a variety of reasons. And we moved from Chicago to Rhinebeck, New York. And Rhinebeck in that time was, was about, it's about an hour and a half north of New York City. It was the country. Unfortunately, the rich people found it. And uh, the neighborhood started going bad. People like Hillary Clinton had her daughter's wedding there, Chelsea's. You know, so the place became too white for me. <laughs> but when I first moved up there, it was, you know, a bunch of young people, a lot of artists. And and I used to, my, when I was married, you know, we used to raise all our, we used to grow all our own vegetables, put them up for the winter, 100 quarts of tomatoes plus a year. And I used to raise my own chickens, made my own prosciutto. And, you know, I was a recluse for, for almost four years. And, you know, because I, I was shocked about what I was learning and, and seeing, and I couldn't believe it. And I just didn't want to be around people. But I learned how to really, really do it on my own. And if I have to do it on my own, I can. And that's why I resent so much when people like these little wankers that call themselves lawmakers <laughs> and they pontificate on what you should do and what you should think and how you should behave. <laughs> yeah. you know. So, yes, it, it brings it back to, and you said it the best, they don't believe they can be free. No. And when you hear them when talking of these politicians, about how who cares about me the most? Mm. What, 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 grow up. You think these people care about you? Exactly. They could care less. Do you think they wake up in the morning and say, gee, I wonder if that soldier in Afghanistan just took a bullet behind his head or lost his leg? Mm. You know, they care every day. And do you know what Michelle Obama said yesterday? This is what really made me want to throw up. Mm. And if I could throw up in front of her, I would do it on her feet. No, oh, lovely. She, she, you know what she <laughs> said? She yeah. said to the troops. Oh, no. We have your back. <laughs> we have your back. Oh, yeah? I don't see you out there with a gun, sweetie. Too right, Gerald. And I'd respect them a bit more. I've, I've said in my book that if, people, if, if a Cameron or a Bama or any of those guys were to go on the front line, they'd wee their pants if a, a bullet flew by. And I'd respect them a bit more, like, like sort of Robin Hood, if they were on their horse at the front. 
but they get everyone else to do it. They, they, they want these other people to do it. I mean, it's easier, isn't it? And the drones now, same thing. They don't need a pension. They don't they haven't got a voice. They don't need a, a money. They don't need a uniform. They, have, they, they, they got no conscience. They got no ethical. I think ethical compromises, uh, Gerald, are the, one of the biggest things we face. One of the most frightening uh, prospects is ethical compromises. Uh, we're getting used to them. So you get used to a few people bomb. You get, oh, it's only a few more brown-skinned people. Never mind. Don't worry about it. I feel ethical compromises are one of them. And people just get used to lies. They get used to listening to these maniacs, as you call them, megalomaniacs, which is what they are. If you look at their uh, current situation, their past, um, it's obvious that they're maniacs. And what, what could you talk a little bit, Gerald, I want to, if we got time, I don't know if you've got to go, you've got to go, but if you, could you talk a little bit about trajectories? Um, what we decide now is a trajectory for the future. It's like making a soup now, a, a meal. And whatever you put in the pot creates the future. I talk a lot about that myself. Yeah, and well, that's what forecasting trends is. It's a, yeah. the understanding of how we got here, where we are, and where we're going. You do that so well, you know. So you look at how we got here. It just You're doing what you're doing in life. I'm doing what I'm doing with life. Everybody out there listening is doing what they're doing in life because of decisions that we've made. Yeah. And then there are the wild cards, you know, that change the, you know, that are in the deck that change the whole course that you can't forecast. But you can definitely see the face of the future. You can't see all the details. So when you look at what's going on now, you can see the face of the future and what it's going to be. And you start reading the reports. For example, a UN report came out today about uh, youth unemployment worldwide. Yeah, no kidding. I've been writing about that for years. Now you put it all together. Now you take a place like Spain or, or Greece, and you have unemployment rates in many of the countries of youth unemployment over 50%. I mean, you don't have to be Freud to figure this one out. You got young people with testosterone and hormones you know, raging through their body, no future in front of them. They're angry as hell, and they're raging mad. You think you're not, you're not going to see class warfare? You don't think you're going to see civil unrest? You think they're just going to lay down and get rolled over? So you start putting it together and you can see you can see why you had uprisings in Tunisia, in Egypt, why the indignados are getting out into the streets in Spain, and how it's going to expand in the first great war of the 21st century unless the course has changed. Yeah. Are we getting used to being, again, you, as you were pointing out, the atrocities keep mounting and you keep getting used to them. Drone attacks killing people, so what? But it's even greater than that. You look at what's going on in Vietnam. Start reading about the corruption from the top. Name the country. Name the country, the people in power. There's the corruption. Again, that's why those, those little people in the conventions dressed up like morons with their cheese hats on their heads and <laughs> from Wisconsin or, or Big Uncle Sam hats waving <laughs> flags. Why are they doing it? Because they're getting something from it. Yeah, exactly. The entire system is corrupt. Yeah, yeah. So it's corruption at very all of the different levels. And where does it go back to? Why are you accepting the corruption? Why? Because you're getting paid. Yeah, and yeah. you don't mind killing people if you get paid for it. You don't mind killing them if it means dumping poison in their water, in their air, or in their food, as long as you're getting fat on it. Yeah. So that's what it keeps going back to. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's why in, as you go throughout history... You see, you know, the Muhammads, the Jesus, the Buddhas, why they keep, you know, popping up at certain times throughout the civil, civilization cycle or the uncivilized cycle. Because the breakdown is so deep that, and so apparent that it's a reawakening mm. to saying, you know, what is life, the purpose of life? Yeah. And, yeah. and that might be the question to ask at this time. Mm. What is the purpose of life? I keep talking to people about dropping the labels, Gerald, you know, dropping the labels of uh, or religion and everything, and, and, and the whole thing's killing us. We, we, we've got to drop those labels now, as I'm sure you know. And money, as you said, keeps coming back to money, doesn't it? Money, I know we all need it, but money's killing us. And whether it's pebbles, matches, gold, silver, it's still ethically compromising people. People alive for it, die for it, cheat for it, kill for it, steal for it, sell their children for it. Do you see a system, do you see a future where we could do something without money, Gerald? Or do you think, what I'm worried about is it's like a, uh, it's like a Frankenstein's monster and it's killing us and we're resuscitating the same system that's going to kill us again. It's not the coinage, it's, to me, it's the behavior. Fantastic. You know, it's, it, it's, 
Fantastic. And, you know, the, the, the means, the, the dollars are just the means of, of or, the, or the, the rubies or whatever they are. You know, they're just the rupees. They're, they're just a matter of exchange. It's, it's again, the rupee. It's look, with, look at the corruption going on in India, making the news all the time, from coal to cell phones, you name it. And again, it's the human spirit. Yep. And, and that, to me, is, has to be going into a whole different realm. The spirit has to be awoken yeah. and directed. And again, it all comes down to rich or poor, you know, race, creed, and color. It makes no difference. It's only in the end, it's only about you mm. and how you're living your life and how you're going to end it. Because again, I don't want to end this on a bad trip, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that, again, only speaking for myself. You know, there's another, you know, if people think that I'm this guy, you know, railing on, you know, <laughs> You know, it, trends are only a part of my life. Mm. I love to have a great time. Yeah. Our offices are filled with beauty. I have about 140 plants in my place, and I take care of every one of them. There's art everywhere, and I love to boogie. I'll tell you what, I could out-boogie any of these cats out there. They're so <laughs> stiff, man. <laughs> so, you know, so, I mean, I love having a good time. You know, one thing has nothing to do with the other. I didn't create these horrors. I got my own, you know. I don't need to live with theirs. So when, so what I would say as a suggestion, mm. and you talked a lot about fear and why people buy into it, is that beauty is an antidote to fear. Beautiful. Beautiful. And to Absolutely. surround yourself with as much beauty as you can. Yep. It doesn't take a lot to buy a plant. Exactly. And to, and, or to grow, rip up your, your front yard with that this growing grass that you can't smoke or eat and plant something in there that you can. You know, make, make your garden, you know, have you in this next summer, you know, plant your tomatoes and peas and all the seasonal vegetables as they go through the cycle. And, and start surrounding your, 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 your environment with beauty. Mm. And when you begin with that, to me, that's a way of moving into a more positive change. Oh, and one more. Don't dress like a cafone. You know, you're showing up like a slob all over the place. <laughs> when did this start to happen? <laughs> you know, where is the dignity and self-respect? It doesn't take a lot to get dressed up. And I'm not talking about designer stuff, labels, as you said. You could go to the thrift shops, the secondhand shops, the antique, the vintage, the Goodwill of the Salvation Army, and you could dress up like a prince or a princess. I think, and I think, it doesn't take a lot. And get in shape, I think, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and stop eating crap. Mm. Eat good food, mm. and you don't need a lot of it. Mm. That's the key. I think we can agree on that, Gerald, for sure. That's the key. Unless we, unless we come back towards ourselves, even if the system recovers from, from its smash, we're just going to kill ourselves again and again unless we find that, that thing inside us that we've been robbed of or we've re relinquished. Do you know what I mean? You know, I, went, I, I, always, I like to get dressed, you know. And I, I, the other, it's summertime, and I have, you know, a white suit. And I put on that white suit at night when it's nice and chilly out and it's just perfect, and I stroll through town. Boy, strangers come up to me and say, wow, you look great, you look great, you look great. It doesn't take anything, and you feel great. Yep. It's self-respect. Yep, exactly. So when people have self-respect, they demand respect from others, and they show it to all those that deserve respect, regardless of class or stature. Mm. So that's where, to me, it begins. It begins with courage, not to cower to power, yeah. To, to dignity. Mm. Yeah, you have your place on earth. Nobody's here to tell you what to do with it. We, and, res and respect, as I said, and integrity to live by your word and passion mm. for mm. your heart to feel what your mind knows. Mm. And begin with that, and I think that's the course to change. Mm. Absolutely. Because, you know, there's that wonderful Hindu saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Mm. I believe when the people are ready, the leaders will appear. You're dead right. I think, I think someone said we get the leaders we deserve. And I know that sounds a bit brutal, like it's blaming ourselves. But if we can all do, make that transformation that we've been robbed of and depleted of and have, had it bashed out of us and we've been left helpless, rendered virtually helpless, 
I think then we will, once we change and transform, you've said it very well there, Gerald, I think we will get the leaders we deserve. And we deserve, and ironically, it'll probably be ourselves that lead us, not other people. Exactly. Now, you know, we, you, know you don't mind having, you know, somebody running the show as long as you agree what, how the show is going. You know, you need the producer, yeah. the director, and the, sure. you know, everybody to do their job. Yeah. But, you know, let's agree on what the job is going to be and, and have a happy ending. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, and on that happy ending note, yeah, we better. I, I, I will say, uh, <laughs> ciao, ciao, arrivederci, bon cheerio, and goodbye. <laughs> Brilliant, uh, Gerald. We are definitely um, 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 uh, uh, magicians with amnesia, as you've said there, and we agree. And we've got to take our power back, Gerald. Listen, I really appreciate you coming on, Gerald. It's been fantastic speaking to you. And I believe you are like one of those Buddhas. It's just that you talk a bit more loudly, and that's good because it puts it across better, you know? <laughs> okay. Listen, and great, best of good fortune with your book. And again, the Trends Journal, we, we try to make it available to everyone. We know people have a tough time out there. There's a discount request page. So we'll do our very, very best to make it available to you so that you can prepare yourself for what's ahead. Rather than go down with the ship, you can prepare, survive, and prevail. That's very kind of you to offer people that, Joe. Can you just tell them where you, they can get it again? Oh, Trends Journal. TrendsJournal.com. TrendsJournal.com. I highly recommend it myself. It's a fantastic read, and it's something everybody should get every, every single time it comes out. Thanks. And we do, and I do trends in the news videos every day. Well, I, so you stay on uh, top of the trends and ahead of the news. I just saw the one this morning, and I watched it four times, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a, it's a brilliant, Gerald. Thank you so much. It's, it's well, really thank you. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you, Gerald. Bye. Well, thank you, Gerald, again. Uh, what can I say, really? Um, I love that guy. Uh, he's a great guy, Gerald, and, um, you know, it's, it's just amazing to hear someone speaking the truth, you know. And uh, it's sometimes harder to, to, to sort of talk about the truth, and uh, you know, than it is to talk about the rubbish. It's, 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 it's incredible, and thank you, Gerald, so much for coming on. Um, really, really enjoyed that. And um, I, I, again, um, suggest to everybody to get the Trends Journal. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, um, uh, publication, and Gerald, uh, as he said, does something every day, which is wonderful. And, um, you know, really, I, just just a, a couple of things have come into my mind, you know, when I've been, after I've been speaking to Gerald, is that, you know, we must become the change. There's no doubt about it, and we are the change. And I think that's what people have got to realize is that, a lot of the power does lie in our hands, and like Gerald said there, you know, we 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 really do hold 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 the sort of conductor's stick, really, of the orchestra. We are an orchestra as humanity, and we are. There's no doubt we've gone terribly out of tune. Um, in one sense, I suppose you could blame ourselves for, because it's self sabotage and, and neglect of our, of our sort of power and everything, and we give it away too too easily, and we you know. But on the other hand, it's been robbed from us because of the system. You know, we're born into this system. Uh, which which we be, become used to it, like I've said many times on this show. You know, uh, you you come into the system and you're, you're born into it, and you you get used to it. And like we just talked with Gerald about, is the 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 ethical compromises uh, go further and further down the line, and we get used to them. And that is very very dangerous indeed. Um, I, I just may scribble something down here, which I wanted to remember to say, which, which was that years ago when when I realised this stuff, because Gerald just said about it now. He was saying, I don't know, a long time ago, he said he started looking into this stuff. Gerald was in, in, in you know, the, doing stuff in the government and stuff like that. And he said it was, it was, it was terrible to, to see this stuff and shocking. That was his exact word. He was shocked by it, you know. And I, I want to say to everyone here now that um, some, something that I, I really feel very strongly about is that when I started also looking at this stuff many years ago, it was shocking and it was very lonely to find out how dreadful this system can be, uh, or, or rather how dreadful the people in charge of the system can be, and how it overspills onto the people. But I want to say this, it, it really did bring me down years ago, and I went through a period of dreadful depression and drinking, and I couldn't stand it. But you know what? It's changed now. And I know a lot of people still don't want to see this stuff, but I want to tell you this. Actually, realizing this stuff is not depressing. It's absolutely liberating. Now, it sounds like a sort of strange paradox, but it's not. It's really liberating because, and I'll tell you why, what it makes you realize is why you didn't feel really quite right in this system for all those years. So really, it lets you off the hook. And understanding this system and how ridiculous it is, 
Um, and what a puppet show it is, like he said about the Congress thing. It actually lets you off the hook and it's very liberating. It's uh, enlightening. It's like, wow, hey, that's why I didn't feel so uh, good. That's why I didn't feel right all these years doing these things I had to do. That's why I didn't feel right never having any money. That's why I didn't feel right leaping out of bed six o'clock in the morning, never seeing my children until they're asleep at night when I come home exhausted. That's why I felt depressed. That's why I didn't feel quite right about this system when I didn't have any money left at the end of the month after I'd paid all my bills. And um, that's why I didn't feel quite right. So I'm telling you, it's really time to look at this stuff. A lot of people won't, as we discussed with Gerald, um, but a lot of people are. And and there's definitely a, 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 a consciousness transformation. Now, my book, the, the Emergency Transformation of Human Beings, is, is dedicated to that. And um, I talk mostly about that very thing. Uh, about the the, 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 the the change in human beings. And I do believe, like we just said with Gerald, I think the an, an anesthetic is weird enough. Like Gerald said, not for everybody. Um, but in, in one sense, uh, we've been almost possessed by, 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 by the people that run this show. It's, they've put us to sleep. And it's, we've been possessed physically because we rely on them for food and money. We, we've been possessed psychologically because uh, we're, we're mostly controlled by fear and, 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 and debt. Um, with the banks and everything, and we've we've almost be, become uh, possessed psychically because it's almost a possession of our consciousness, you know. And um, th- there's no doubt about it. It is a, like Jell said, it's a Disneyland show, and in, uh, in the, those things you're seeing now out there with with you know the Obamas and the Romneys, and people are idolizing them and waving their flags and sh- literally shouting, "Help us! We're helpless. We can't we can't live without you controlling us and leading us." But I think it was important what Gerald said, uh, that we do all, you know, sometimes we need, a, 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 um, what's it called, a director of a show or, you know, the people that do their things within that show, but not on such a ridiculous level, you know. It's like we're, we're really controlled too much and people have become used to that. Um, you know, I gave the analogy of, of the horse, like like we said just now with Gerald, that, that, that we, our spirits have been broken. And there's no doubt they have been broken. And that is part of the transformation now, I feel, that we're putting ourselves back together like Humpty Dumpty, if you know that story. I had a great fall, fell off the wall, you know. And you've got to, we've got to put ourselves back together. And I don't like to bang on about religion because it's a terribly uh, controversial subject, but the word religion means... From the word relegare, which means to re-ligament, to re-tie, to remember to what we've lost. Forget about the, the higher man with the, the beard. Just talk about us. Let's keep it basic and let's keep it common sense here on earth. Keep your feet on the ground. We've got to put ourselves back together because we've been dislocated from ourselves. There's no doubt about it. It's a dismembering. The system dismembers you. It knocks you off kilter. It takes you off center and it pulls you away from yourself. Um, the rush ahead of yourself, the rush to accumulate, the rush to pay the bills, the rush to get to work, the ru- and we're always a few steps ahead of, our, of our, ourselves, you know. And one of the, I, I really like what Gerald said there because I was saying about you know to Gerald, do you think we can we can have a possibly have a system without money? Because the way it came up is I was saying you know. Um, money. I'm worried we're going to resuscitate the Frankenstein's monster that's going to kill us, the, the currency system now. Um, you know, it's like a dead corpse, which is like a cancer almost, which is killing us because people will do anything for money almost. And it ethically compromises people, particularly at the top with the more they get. The people at the bottom who've got less ethically compromise less than the people who've got more. The more you've got generally, the le- less you care about those who haven't got and the more you're inclined to use them as cannon fodder to get what you want and to protect your castle of money. Yeah, And, and Gerald made a good point and, 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 and I really liked what he said. He said, he said it's not the coinage, it's the behavior. And I, I mean, I've, I've written about that obviously, but I really like the way you put it across. And it's so true. Uh, bravo, Gerald, for that, because it, it, he's right. It's not, I mean, I've said this can be pebbles, matches, you know, it could be could be sticks that you use for a coinage. But if people don't change, this is what I said before, and I was glad to hear Gerald say it, if people don't change um, ethically and begin to be ethically and morally, morally more sound, it doesn't even matter. If you use, um, you know, little pebbles, it doesn't matter. People will still cheat and kill each other. So I've said this many times, and my book is dedicated to that 
transformation in human beings. And I've said it again and again and again in the book, that if we don't, uh, there's an emergency, that if we don't um, transform ourselves and get back those moral, ethical blueprints in us, which are there for a reason, by the way, they're not there by coincidence. Why does food taste nice? Why does sex feel nice? It's there to do a, 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 a do something. Nature's put it there. So it's the same with morals and ethics, and they have been compromised so much. And until we put ourselves right, as Gerald just said, until we change our behavior, we will never change the whole. Like like an orchestra, the analogy I give, and Gerald has said a similar thing in, in, the, in the Trends Journal uh, this month, that humanity has got to change individually. Or, or nothing will change. The, the the person has to change, I think he said, you know. So this is where we are. We have to change everything. Not everything about ourselves. We, we don't have to worry about the good things. They're all there. They're just a little bit covered over by our rush and our madness. It's all there, that peace inside us. But we've got to take responsibility. And we've got to become responsible now. Or, there's no doubt about it, even if we patch up this system, it's going to kill us again. And that's why I called it the Frankenstein's monster. It's almost like a poison chalice, which will be pressed to our lips if we don't change. That's it. And as I said, uh, um, I think I said on the back cover of my book, here it is, we can no longer rely on any world, world government to change things. That obsession with money, war and power has consumed them. And this in turn has consumed us. This system, which is built on fear, short-term greed and slavery, is at the brink of a total collapse. The transformation so urgently needed cannot come from the outside in. It must come from the inside out, from each person's individual transformation, which is the key to the solution of the world's problems. Yeah, That's it, you know. And um, we do stand at a cr critical fork, fork in the road now, and I know it sounds alarmist, and I know I do rant about this, but that's me. That's Jason Leosadis. I I'm, I'm sick of not being me. This is who I am. I talk about this stuff because I'm really concerned about it. And like Jell said, you know, very, very well, I, I'm glad he said it there. He said, hell, very, very beautifully put, he said, hell for him is ending this life or being at the end of his life and knowing that he didn't do the best he could. That is hell. There's no doubt about it, you know. To think that you sat back, and other people in, in, in positions like, like Gerald, I won't use any names here, but a lot of them have said that, you know, um, what are you going to do when your 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 grandchildren or someone says to you, "Hey, what did you do when when the system was was building a fence around you and and confining you and 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 taking everything away from you? What did you do? What did you do?" Well, I, oh, actually, I was watching television every night, swigging champagne or swigging, you know, beer down. Well, well done, Bravo, Gerald, for saying that, you know, and um, you know. Uh, we do stand at a critical fork in the road. It's a turning point in our history. There's no, absolutely no doubt about that, you know. And my book was just going to be about uh, finding peace uh, inwardly. But I, I realized I couldn't just talk about finding peace unless I talked about what takes it away, which, as I said in the beginning, is self-sabotage, but also um, um, uh, a neglect, but mostly from the people that, 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 that take it away from us. And, and you know, Giles right. It is, it, is, it is a Disneyland show. Those people in, in, in Disneyland over there, you know, um, waving their flags, it's very, very shocking. I'm not joking. It's really scary stuff to think people are still out there now um, looking for another idol to lead them because they feel so helpless, you know. And like Jell said, the spirit, human spirit has to change. I think that was his exact words. And what I'm really glad about is, is um, he was saying that um, the next trend, I think it's the next trends journal or, or next year's trends journal, journal is going to be um, about the new new age you know which is fantastic um, we can't we can no longer uh, live in the same system we're living in and that's why so many people are, are scared to see this truth you know and they say oh well no that's too negative for me I, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to look at anything negative well I'm sorry to say if I didn't look at any, anything negative um, you know I might get run over by a bus or, or you know the Titanic hitting the iceberg is a good analogy. You know, there was people on there saying, hey, listen, Captain, we're getting a bit close to those icebergs, I believe, apparently. And, um, oh, no, no, that's a bit negative. No, it's not. Turn the wheel before it's too late. So it's a great responsibility, uh, uh, you know, this stuff that w w we're looking at here, this this truth, this reality of how ridiculous our system is and the, and the, 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 the megalomaniacs that are running the system. I mean, like we we discussed now, 
um, you know, you only got to look what they've done, what they're doing, what they've said, and what they're saying. There we go. I've, I've said it. What they've look at what they've done. Romney, Obama, Bush, Blair. Look at what they've done, what they're doing. Look at what they've said and what they're saying. And you can only surmise. Let's say you brought a person from another planet of sanity. Yeah. What would they surmise? They surmise that these people are insane. There's no doubt about it. What are they doing? My goodness. And, and, and they're projecting in the future. That's why I asked Gerald about trajectories. They're projecting into the future, a future of madness and chaos, because we, the soup of the future is what we make now. Uh, every decision we make now, there's no doubt about that, every single decision we make now uh, creates the future. It, it, it sounds a little bit alarmist, but it does, you know. There's no doubt that, the, you know, the, the, um, our future's made... In every moment and with everything we do, every breath and step we make, uh, we take, I'm just quoting out of the book here, the future impresses itself uh, on us all the time. No sooner we've decided upon something, the future is created, feeds back to affect us. And the future's given us early warning signals now, you know. It's given the, us the chance to alter our course before the mistakes reach fruition, yeah? And uh, one more, I'll just say another sentence out of there. But with technology, techno technological advances accelerating things so fast now we get less and less chance to rectify unwise choices you know and the consequences hit us harder and that's i talk a lot about manual override if you're in a plane and you're on automatic pilot and the decisions you're making are just going to go hurtling into the future and there's nothing you can do about it if you haven't got manual override to pull that stick back and rectify the future you're in big trouble and what we're doing not us what the people that control uh, what our uh, captains and leaders in this airplane trajectory of madness are doing now uh, all against each other fighting like bullies in a schoolyard is they're not intelligently creating the future with vision the vision that's required and the intelligence for the future of this planet and the future of humanity for our children and our grandchildren is a very serious business it's a hugely serious business. And if we don't carefully uh, uh, create that future, because we are manifestors of the future via, via our, our thoughts and our actions now, there's no doubt about that. Uh, we're magicians of the future. There's no doubt about it. And we, we've got to become responsible. And every decision we make now is flying into the future. And even decisions that were made a couple of years ago by the maniacs in control, I really mean it. I'm sorry, it's true. Then... That's going to come back and knock our teeth out like like a swing or a pendulum, you know. So, and, and Gerald was talking also about um, when I was asking him about trajectories. He was saying about um, about you know that's how he he, he he looks at the trends. He looks at the past, um, what's happened in the past. He looks at the present, and that helps him to predict the future, you know. Um, but um, which which is which is what he he said he does. I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, you know give uh, Gerald a compliment here and, and say that I don't think that's all he does because I think Gerald does more than that. I think he intuits the future as well because um, he's very very good at it. You know, you've only got to look at his website and look what he said in the past. He was on on opera. He was on all sorts of things. He's he's on somewhere all the time talking about the future. And Gerald's got an intuition and a, and a sensing for the future by looking at the past and the present. But it's more than that. He's a visionary. There's no doubt about it. Um, he, Ger Gerald can see see things that are coming uh, better than uh, most people. And these are the kind of people you should be listening to. <laughs> this is the thing. You don't listen to people who are, who are, who are just um, randomly making choices to bomb this place or bomb that place to get their oil or to take their minerals or for strategic gain or because they've got their warships parked there or because of this or that. And You know, those aren't the people to, to, to have in control uh, making decisions for you. That That's really, really, really scary stuff, you know. And cause and effect is a huge thing, you know. Um, it, you know, it's a huge subject, and, and, and what it is, it's like a surgeon's scalpel. Um, this is how big the responsibility is, and, and I know this stuff because I've made terrible decisions in the past, and they've come back to smash my teeth out, you know, in, in various parts of my life. I've had a crazy life, you know, um, and, and I've learned a lot from that, um, but, and, but that was only my life. When you've got people in government and control without vision and wisdom, and without the intelligence which is needed to project into the future, they're not only dragging themselves down, like I 
for instance, dragged myself down when I didn't uh, make the right choices. They're dragging the whole of humanity down. But hang on a second, not just humanity, the whole animal kingdom, the whole plant kingdom. It's unbelievable. And they'll blame anything but themselves. Oh, it's this or oh, it's that. No, it's not. It's you, you know. Um, obviously, a tornado can come and rip things up. But So I, I, I feel we're coming into that point now where we've got to take control and... and, and it's like that manual override that I was talking about, and manual override is, 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 is such an important thing, and we've got to start pulling back on the stick now and, and really looking and looking at the people that are in control of our, of our lives, you know. And, um, and, 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 you know, like Jell said, it's not the coinage. I love what he said about the money system. The money's killing us. There's no doubt about that. The money system is the main cause of concern now for me. Um, because it's and war obviously money and war and they go hand in hand but th that is like a surgeon's scalpel but i think money's an amazing yardstick and that's why i'm glad gerald mentioned that behavior thing with the money not, you, know, you know it's not the coinage it's the money it's not the money as such whether it's pebbles or anything it's the people that are using it and whether they're going to compromise ethically so it's that behavior that we got to come back to so everything we do changes the future there's no doubt about it and and i mean i know i'm sounding a bit esoteric when i say the next thing but and it's true it almost sounds a bit stupid when i say it you only got to listen to physicists now you know um, rupert Sheldry, greg braden you know Lon uh, lonis lipton i think his name is and all these these people who are scientists physicists they're all saying the same thing now it's, it's you can't argue with it anymore that everything's connected so everything we do changes the future everything everything not only does it change the future, it's even, it's even more of a responsibility than that. It changes someone else, another human being. Now, I don't know the intricacies of it because it's a, it's a, it's a massive lattice, you know, but it does. So that's a huge responsibility we've got now. And um, to, to, to change ourselves in order to change the future, you know. And um, it really is like a surgeon scalpel, and, 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 and I believe it's a race now. I, I believe we're in a race. I think we're in a race of where the human, and I will be talking about this a lot more. This is my big subject. This is what I talk about all the time. Um, you know, it's a race to transformation or annihilation, and I know that sounds a bit scary, and most people might put their hands on their ears. Oh, I don't want to hear about that. It's negative. Well, you know, or, or um, you know, yeah, what you resist persists or you know uh you know you shouldn't look at anything negative and like the buddhists say you shouldn't look at anything negative but actually you should because it's, if it's killing you you better change it you know and and like like we talked about on the interview it's personal transformation that's going to do it we can't wait for the people that are, are causing mayhem to change it because they're at the moment they're not going to and these people by the way have got grandchildren and 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 they're, they're megalomaniacs. I mean, you only got to look at them in in the conventions now that Gerald was talking about. And these people are, 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 are lavishing the applause. I mean, if someone happens to clap for me, I I, I get really embarrassed. I don't, I, you know, I almost say, please, you know, don't don't clap, you know. Rather use that energy to help someone. Don't don't clap. I'm not, you know, this clever guy. Someone once said that um, if if the applause of other people is the only thing that makes someone feel like they're alive. They're very sad, you know. And there they are up there, like like Gerald said, you know, like it's almost like their mums and uh, their grandmums, grandmothers are better than your grandmother, you know. <laughs> but that's the way it works. It's a business. It, it, you know, this 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 um, this Disneyland Romney Obama show. It is. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a business. It's like you know how many billions and billions of pounds are being funded. By the way, by the banks, by the people who want them in, you know, um, to get them in, and it is like a, it's like a Gerald said, a freak show, and I'm sorry to tell you, it is, and it's ridiculous. Become big business. It's like who, you know, who's gonna who's gonna put me in? You know, it's it's just I'm not joking. It's crazy. Um, so we must become the change. And another, just to cover a thing that Gerald said towards the end there, which was, um, I know I'm going on about Gerald, but but I, but I really appreciate Gerald. Because he's one of the very few people out there who have got the guts to stand up and talk about it. You know, there's not many people that will do that. And I, I can make an, I'll make a prediction here. I'll, I'll make a, a, a forecast here if Gerald will permit me. Yeah, <laughs> Gerald's better at that than me. But I will make a forecast here. Yeah, I will forecast that 
we're going to have a merging. Now, I mean, and people have been saying that for a while, but I think it's going to be more of a merging than we think. There's going to be a merging between between um, people transforming, and 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 the other thing coming in, which is which is the governments and everything like that and all. It's it's going to be a different thing happening now. Yeah, it's going to be like that transformation. There's going to be a melding of the two, and it's not just going to be one or the other. And I think, like we said, it's gonna it's gonna over overtake um, and change the politics. You know, the the transform the human transformation, um, individual transformation. There's no doubt, as we discussed in in the interview, will dictate dictate the politics of this world there's no doubt about it because and you can see it happening now people are transforming so fast not fast enough in my opinion but they are transforming so fast now that even people in the military are saying no and and suffering the consequences they're saying do you know i really can't drop a bomb on that country i really can't i can't drop a bomb on those people who really i'm connected to you know molecularly they're, they're my brothers and sisters you know i i can't do that just because you said their leaders are bad, then you're going to get those leaders. And, and of course, it's not so bad for a drone, because as we said in the interview, a drone can drop a bomb anywhere, and there's some guy in a booth somewhere with less of a conscience than, than if he presses a button from an airplane with bombs underneath him, and he's got to fly home thinking about it. But if you're in a booth somewhere, and you do it with a drone, there's less of a conscience. There's more of a gap then, isn't there? And then someone gives him the command to do that. So there's another gap there. And then someone gives the command of the command, Obama. Uh, I, uh, um, what was his name? David Swanson, great guy I had the, on the other day, was saying that actually there's a, there's a, there's a murder, murder list in, in the White House. That's what he said. And they choose who to murder each week. <laughs> it's astonishing, you know. I, I could hardly believe it when he said it, David Swanson. It was incredible. I, he's on, he, I've interviewed him. He's on my on my um, interview uh, list there. You can listen again on www.jasonleosatos. That's L I O S A T O S. Jasonleosatos dot com. You can listen to David on there, and he was saying there's there's a murderer's list there. Ooh, 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 you know, so people are waking up. People are coming out around from the chloroform. In a way, it's not happening fast enough. In another way. I said to someone the other day, and I'm not this soothsayer, I just talk about common sense. I don't think I'm this clever guy at all. I mean, I don't even know my maths times tables. I don't even go to school. You know, I'm the dunce of the universe to a great degree. But I just see things in clear day, light of day, like they're common sense. Someone said to me the other day, I'm so frustrated, they said, uh, because things aren't happening quick enough. He said, I'm speaking to people and it just seems like, like they don't understand, like they're asleep and they won't face the reality of what we're, what's happening on the planet, you know. This this gentleman I spoke about, he's got little children and he was really concerned, you know, and I don't blame him. And something came into my mind. I said, you know something? I said, it's probably a good job that people aren't waking up quicker than everyone that wakes up at the same time from the chloroform, from, from the sort of... Uh, anesthetizing effects of our, our system of sedation if you like because if everyone woke up at once the whole system would collapse to its knees overnight no one would go to work no one would uh, fight in the military if everyone saw the truth for what it was there's no doubt about that everyone would stop I mean, there would be some people who would be more frightened than others and and obviously I'm, I'm making a big brush stroke here they would be scared you know because they wouldn't get money and then they couldn't eat so it's not as simple as that but I said it's a good job people are waking up slowly. So the transformation is happening slowly. There's people waking up and they're waking up in, in, in you know, they're waking up uh, slowly, you know. So um, I, just before I go, I want to just, I just want to just uh, quote quote something out of the book here, if you don't mind. It's, uh, it's, it's the start of my book. It's, it's called The Birth of a New Epoch of Consciousness, you know. And um, I just want to just want to mention it before I go here. You know, I just the subheading is the true transformation which will change our whole existence is waiting within the womb of each person's consciousness to be born. Now, my great mentor Charles Muses said that I didn't say that, but I I go on to say humanity is ungo undergoing a sacred pregnancy, which sounds a bit radical, which nothing will stop though we may have to push a little. Yeah. And we're going to have to push a little. We can't. This is me speaking. Now, we're going to have to push a little. We can't just wait for something to happen we've got to help it along but it needs to be given birth to you know? and the word epoch comes from the greek word epoche which means stoppage okay and in all pregnancies there comes a point where the pregnancy stops and the birth begins so we as humans are now at that critical point in our evolution and consciousness and obviously the state of the world 
and 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 we're being forced to prepare ourselves now as quickly as possible to let go of what we've been and embrace what we're becoming, like the transformation that I just talked about with Jell. You know? The emergency and resurgence of what we once were, which has become dangerously overdue, it's been likened, I've likened it to an umbilical cord to ourselves, which has got to the point where it's almost snapping completely, exacerbated by our system, which automatically disconnects us from our vibrant selves. Humanity is heavily pregnant with itself, and we as individuals are now being prompted to become the midwives for the birth of ourselves <laughs> and the birth and beginning of a new, whole new way of living and being on this planet based on a more symbiotic relationship with ourselves and everything else. And I, I really mean it when I say it. We, we no longer have the luxury to put our transformation off till tomorrow. You know, we, we haven't. We, we haven't got that. Um, um, we haven't got that uh, luxury anymore, you know. And like back to Gerald, like he said, it's the, it, you know, he was talking about beauty as the antidote, you know. And, and, and I, I like that, you know, uh, integrity and truth, I wrote down, as someone else he said, and, you know, uh, and I've written here myself, the emergency transformation of consciousness is the antidote to every problem on the planet. Almost every problem on the planet could almost be changed with consciousness if we put our shoulders, each person should put their shoulders to the wheel. And yes, we're, have to gonna, we're gonna have to face ourselves. I had to face myself. Gerald talked about facing himself, you know, and, and, and he's got, you know, when he, when he started looking at this stuff, it is a, you know, it's hard to face yourself sometimes. I think he said that, correct me if I'm wrong, Gerald, or he alluded to that, I think. And it's hard to sometimes face yourself, but until we do and, and change ourselves, and and I I was blaming money and I'm glad glad Gels changed my mind today you know because I I was thinking I was I was speaking about the money like it's the evil like it's the Frankenstein's monster that's going to kill us well Gel really and and, and like me I I sort of thought about it before but just the simple way he said it it's the behaviour not the coinage you know and that is what it is we can't blame everything we can't blame technology. Because it's a surgeon's scalpel, it can be used to heal and it can be used to harm. It depends who's holding that scalpel, okay? And I'm going to leave you with that thought. There's scalpels everywhere. Everywhere there's scalpels. And it's up to us how we use those scal scalpels. But we've got people spearheading the charge towards madness and mayhem. And we've got to change ourselves, otherwise they're not going to change. So we've got a responsibility to change as individuals or they'll never change the people. So it's up to us. It's on our shoulders. So again, thank you, Gerald Salente, for coming on today. Um, and um, deeply appreciate it. And just have a look at trends.com, gelsalente.com, and um, yeah, go and get that Trends Journal. It's a fantastic edition, and I highly recommend it. And from Global Peace Radio today, I'm Jason Leosatis. Um, and my website again is www.jasonleostatus.com and I thank you all for listening and thanks to Gerald again and take care and I'll see you soon bye now <laughs>